Spanning Tree Protocol, or STP, is a network protocol that prevents loops by blocking links in your network. Today, we'll take a closer look at how to configure Spanning Tree on SG550XG switches on this edition of Tech Talks, next. First, we'll log in and go to Spanning Tree Status and Global Settings under the Spanning Tree tab. Spanning Tree is enabled by default. Loopback Guard can be enabled in case one needs to do STP optimization. The Loop Guard feature checks if a root port or an alternate root port receives BPDUs or not. If not, then the Loop Guard feature puts the port into an inconsistent state until it starts receiving BPDUs again. To configure STP protocol to run, we can choose any of the options present. Classic STP provides a single path between two endpoints to eliminate loops. Rapid STP, the default option, detects network topologies to provide faster convergence of STP. Multiple STP detects layer two loops and attempts to mitigate them by preventing the port from transmitting traffic. For this example, we'll use Rapid STP. Now to set the default path cost method, we can either choose long, which ranges from one to 200 million, or short, which ranges from one to 65,535. To configure the switch priority, which is used to determine which bridge is the root bridge, we can enter the bridge priority number ranging from zero to 61,440. In this example, we'll use 32,768. We also have the optional step to configure STP timers like hello time, max age, and forward delay. They have a default value of two, 20, and 15 seconds respectively. To check the status of the rapid STP, we'll navigate to the RSTP interface settings under the spanning tree tab. Here, we can see the RSTP port roles. For this example, port XG1 is the root port that is forwarding traffic. And that's how we configure STP and RSTP on SG550X series switches. Thanks for watching Tech Talks from Cisco. We'll see you next time.